Residential wood framing exposes workers to several potential hazards, such as falls, power tools, flammable materials, performing repetitive tasks, and working outdoors in extreme weather. The importance of understanding your company's safety program is to help get each worker home safely at the end of each shift. A company's safety plan will include procedures for identifying, evaluating, and preventing job site safety hazards that may arise during construction. An effective safety plan will also outline the rules and responsibilities for every worker. The most common types of injuries related to wood framing are head injuries from drop tools or equipment, falling from the structure, ladders, or scaffolding, being electrocuted, lacerations, punctures, and amputations, eye injuries from flying debris, back strains during lifting and moving material, and hearing loss. A properly executed safety plan starts with Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE. Proper PPE is one of the key essentials to eliminate hazards for framing jobs. Hard hats will help protect a worker from falling objects or struck by hazards. Safety glasses can protect their eyes from flying debris. Steel-toed boots with a heel and slip-resistant and puncture-resistant sole can prevent any slip, trip, or fall injuries. And hearing protection when using power tools like saws and pneumatic nail guns will help prevent hearing loss. Preparing the work area for the job can help alleviate many potential hazards and injuries. For instance, safely stacking materials near the work area and using mechanical lifting devices such as forklifts or skid steers can help to avoid ergonomic or musculoskeletal injuries. As while well, not lifting objects or materials that are too bulky or heavy by yourself, use a team lift approach in those instances. Also, remember to clean the site thoroughly during the work and after it's completed, removing debris that could pose a tripping hazard and any boards with nails that could cause laceration or puncture wounds. Fires are more common on residential construction job sites than many think. Working with a variety of combustible materials, such as lumber, adhesives, gasoline, and other flammable materials can lead to dangerous and costly fires. Make sure all combustible materials are not stored within 10 feet of a structure. Keep fire extinguishers easy to reach and be trained on how to use them. In the event of a fire, exit the structure and call 911. Operating a nail gun safely starts with reviewing the instruction manual carefully and making sure that manufacturer's tool labels and safety instructions are understood and followed. Workers who have not been trained should not use the tool. When working with or near a nail gun, always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. Always handle the tool carefully and inspect the tool before each use. Check the tool's overall condition and whether the safety mechanisms are in working order and test them before operation. Ensure that hoses are free from damages like cracks or weak points and loose screws. Exercise extreme caution when using a nailer around another worker. Only those involved in the work should be in the area. Never attempt to remove or bypass safety devices, triggers, or contact springs in order to speed up the process of nailing. When the air hose is connected to the tool, never walk around with your finger on the trigger or climb or descend a ladder while holding the nail gun. When used properly following all tool instructions, nailers can effectively cut the time it takes to complete a job in half and significantly reduce the chance of a serious injury. Working with power tools, generators, and possibly near power lines exposes workers to electrical hazards and even electrocution. So it's essential to inspect all tools and equipment before and after their use. First, confirm that workers have the proper training and or certification for each tool they're using on site. Then check for defective, broken, or frayed insulation on cords and plugs, and look for loose and broken switches and make sure that all cords and extensions are double insulated and have a three-pronged plug. When working at heights, it's very important to be aware of overhead power lines. So take precautions to avoid power lines while using cranes or lifts or when working from a ladder or scaffold. 
speaking of heights, falls are one of OSHA's top four causes of construction fatalities. So it's extremely important to use fall protection when working from heights. Guardrails, safety nets, or a personal fall arrest system must be used when workers are exposed to floor openings, wall openings, and open stairways. When using a personal fall arrest system, be sure to inspect the harness for any damage before donning it. Note that all workers must be properly trained and certified in use of fall arrest systems, and a fall rescue plan must be in place prior to the start of work. Protect workers from impalement hazards, such as unprotected steel rebar with appropriate caps. Portable ladders are often used during framing operations, so be sure to inspect all ladders prior to use. Look for damage to individual components like rungs, cross supports, and feet. Never make makeshift repairs to a ladder, and follow all manufacturer's warnings and instructions on the labels. Once there has been a complete inspection of the portable ladder, and there is no risk posed to any worker, follow these steps for a proper setup. Make sure the spreader is locked and secure before climbing. Maintain a three-point contact. Always use a ladder that can support at least four times the maximum intended load. When using a ladder to access another level, make sure it's set at the proper angle, four to one. Secure it at the top or bottom to prevent movement and extends three feet above the landing to provide a handhold when getting on and off. Aerial lifts are convenient for working at heights and for moving materials into elevated workspaces. Always use a body harness or a restraining belt with a lanyard attached to the boom or bucket. When using an aerial lift, ensure that access gates or openings are closed during operation. Remember, only trained and authorized persons can operate an aerial lift. Do not climb on or lean over guardrails or handrails. And don't exceed the load capacity limits. Remember to take the combined weight of the workers, tools, and materials into account when calculating the load. Weather conditions can play a big part in working safely. Be aware of changing weather conditions during your workday, such as high wind or extreme heat or cold or other inclement weather. Check your local forecast regularly. When working in extreme temperatures, be sure to acclimate workers to the conditions, especially heat, and take adequate precautions. When working in very hot or cold weather, dress appropriately. Take frequent rest breaks to cool down or warm up, drink water, and monitor workers for signs of illness due to the weather elements. Remember, safety is everyone's job while on the job site. 